Hey everyone, this is Peter from The Samplist, and today we'll be checking out The Infinite Upright by Emergence Audio. Emergence Audio is a project founded by Michael and Erica Vignola, driven by a love for exploring the full potential of sound. They provide easy-to-use tools that allow a composer to tap into their most creative side, creating immersive and transformative musical experiences. Infinite Upright is the latest addition to their conceptual line of instruments, providing a wide array of sonic possibilities from a piano bass. It uses Emergence Audio's non-static sampling technique and their Infinite Motion Engine, so the interface will look familiar if you have used their other products. It has over 100 parameters to tweak and roughly 200 snapshots to inspire. Infinite Upright retails for 149 US dollars and is made for the free Contact 6 player. It will take up about 10 gigabytes on disk. Thanks to Emergence Audio for a review copy of Infinite Upright. As usual, while Emergence Audio provided us with a review copy, they did not have any input into the decision-making process or review and have not seen this review ahead of time. And I will note that there is an intro pricing period where you'll be able to get this tool for 99 US dollars instead of the 149. Okay, so there are lots of presets to get through. Time to get cracking on the sounds of Infinite Upright. I'm going to get us started on the init patch, which uh, loads up right with the instrument from Contact Player. Uh, there are a couple things to talk about in the interface, but I will save them till after I play through some of the presets. But don't worry, I'll give a quick overview. Again, you may have already seen you know, previous sampless videos or other videos by Emergence Audio, but I will give a quick overview once I play through some presets. But for now, I am going to stop talking and we'll just hear how this thing sounds.
There are a few multis in this instrument as well, so I'll just go over a couple of them here, starting with equations.
some very lovely sounds. And as promised, I'm just going to give a quick walkthrough of the interface. So most, most things are on this single page here. Um, and we do have a separate effects section, but a lot of it is a lot of the interface is built around this LFO. So I'm going to start there. We do have our usual ADSR um, between two different sound sources. Uh, the sources themselves are, are here. We've gone through several of them in the preset walkthroughs. Um, so these sources are selected here. This big knob at the middle will crossfade between the two layers. And you can set the volume of each layer independently on these two. But uh, back to the LFO. So you can see lots of little LFO pictures throughout. And this relates to how, how much, uh, what percentage of the main LFO is being applied to a given effect or parameter um, given that it's on. So with all of these, you have an on off button, you have a polarity swap button, and you have a percentage button uh, or slider. The main LFO itself can go between sine, triangle, saw, square, or random. You have a bypass button, which will bypass these different uh, percentages that go on each effect, which uh, they're called attenuverters. So this will bypass those and use the master LFO setting for, for everywhere it's applied. And then you can turn the LFO on and off this way. Um, rate, rate adjustments, um, and you can tempo sync and do your rate adjustments to the tempo sync as well. So all the great stuff about a, an LFO, uh, the interface updates as you switch types, which is very helpful. Um, especially if you're like me and are a very visual person. The, the filter can be high pass or low pass. And there is a random button here. So this will, um, this will randomize these parameters, the pan, the resonance and the cutoff, as well as the, um, the sources. So. We just hit that there. Um, so that's this main interface. The effects is very similar. So you'll have uh, all of these different parameters, um, or I shouldn't say all of them, but many of them can also be linked to the LFO. So you have a convolution reverb with a nice selection of uh, different um, different reverbs from very, very big ones to more, uh, more respectably small ones. I personally like the very, very big ones. Um, you have a phaser, distortion, rotator, uh, can change the width, have a saturation, saturator, uh, chorus, and then you have lo-fi, with the sample rate and bit options and a tape saturation with warmth and gain. And you can see several of these do have the option to link to the LFO. So very, very um, kind of very straightforward to, to look through all of these parameters. And um, there's really good tool tips on the bottom in case uh, you forget what something means. But once you understand how everything is centered around this LFO, I think that really makes the interface just make sense. Um, in addition, you have a velocity sensitivity bar right here. So uh, you can decide how sensitive you want your playing to be. And uh, the uh, if this crossfader is not on an LFO, you can actually use the mod wheel to go between the two sources. Okay, so there's a quick overview of the interface. Um, I think 
it's a good time to go to the demo. So there's a demo with Emergence Audio's Infinite Upright. I tried to show the, how the textures and the pulses and the pianos themselves mix together. Um, and they blend together quite nicely, providing a pretty full sound between all of them. You could easily write uh, tons of tracks with just this instrument and have them feel very rich. Uh, definitely on a personal note, like in my wheelhouse, I, I really have enjoyed playing this one. Um, so after this, you'll have to excuse me as I go write an ambient album. But let's take a look at this demo. So I've started with the um, Bright as the Sun Part 2 patch. there this what once was which is one of the infant pianos it's just a really it's got that really nice low end and really i feel like that is that is a very nice uh sci-fi sound personally but i think very a very sort of versatile one that you can use in uh, some gentler but also some more serious or cinematic sorts of uh, situations so i did quite like that sound the cosmic tears piano here It really sounds nice on its own. It has this this reverse tail sort of effect. So it's a mixture of this pure piano and pure reverse. If I just play one note. Yeah, that really nice glittery reverse tail at the end adds 
adds just that little extra effect to an otherwise solid sounding piano. So I use that to drive a little bit of a melody. This is overall an ambient-ish track till we get to the end. So relatively sparsely played. Um, the universe is knocking here. It has quite a tail on it. So if I pull this up and go into the effects, we've got a giant reverb and some delay. So I, I just played that note for a second, as you saw, and it's got quite a, quite a tail on it using those two things. So just need to throw a little bit of that in and it, it gave a little bit of atmosphere to the track. In, into sort of the next section, I've used this staring into open flames swell. Which just gives us that gradual build into the next section. this section I've added a couple of the pads so we have a scattered light here which has some nice movement uh, left to right and has just that little bit of texture that's coming through on this uh, Evo expression so gives you as with many of the patches, uh, many of the snapshots in here, you get a lot of, of movement and texture potentially by, by holding these down. So, you know, very, very good at that sort of thing. In addition to having some nice basic piano sounds, if I f flip over to this shimmering mirage, very adequate name for this one. It gives a very shimmery feel, almost like, you know, some sort of wind chimes or uh, really fast plucking or, you know, probably just playing a really quick s series of notes on a piano, but really adds this glittery feel into this section. And so I've built up a few, few notes slowly on that to slowly increase, uh, you know, swell the dynamic in addition to this pixel trails, which is one of the pulses. So you can see here, they've used a square wave in their LFO to really pull things back and forth very suddenly. So it gives you that very instant switch type of feel back and forth. Um, yeah, and then a little bit more of a piano. piano melody to close out this section. We've also added Cosmic Drift, which is one of the correlated snapshots. 
Yeah, this one has quite a bit more of an airy sort of feel. Um, yeah. And then into this final section, I wanted to... Everything up till now has been just infinite upright. I wanted to demonstrate how it sounds along with some other orchestral instruments. So I just threw in some spiccato strings and uh, a brass crescendo swell type of thing to hear how it sounds all together. <laughs> Listen to this without the strings and brass. effects thrown on this have that lo-fi, some tape saturation, um, some distortion and saturation. So uh, quite a few effects on here to give it this old school wobbly feel. And uh, they've, they've used a random LFO here to kind of add to that old school feel. So a little bit of a different feel on the piano there. And then this on the way up pad provides, again, a nice little swell. really gives these strings a nice bed to come off of. So I think with the variety of textures you have in here and being that they're sourced from a piano, it really seems to mix well with orchestral elements, which is probably unsurprising, but good to hear it all the same. So I really like how this can complement uh, other orchestral instruments if you're throwing it all together. But I do think for certain types of music, certainly for some cinematic underscoring, this could work by itself. And for more spacey ambient type music, this could work on its own quite well. And I do, I do like the bass piano in here um, for that more sort of delicate feel. It's, it's really good. Um, so that takes us through the demo. I'll just reiterate what I've sprinkled throughout. I, I think Infinite Upright is very useful as a textural instrument. There's tons to choose from with those 200-ish snapshots. Lots of options, lots of really cool textures that can be very gentle, very uplifting, very beautiful, and a few of them that cross a little bit over into the more gritty side as well. Uh, the, the interface allows you certainly to easily tweak the existing snapshots to make them fit a little bit better. And with that randomization feature can really help you try and you know roll your own types of sounds if you don't wanna try and just make them make them yourself, but with good source material, there's a lot you can do, and there's certainly some good source material in here. 
So that's, that's it for Infinite Upright. Hopefully that gave you a good idea of what this instrument is capable of and what it sounds like. Um, as always, thank you for listening. Thank you for making it to the end of this. Please like and subscribe. And we would like to thank Emergence Audio again for the review copy of Infinite Upright. So we'll see you all next time. And that's it from the Samplist. Mm-hmm.